All right, so what I'm gonna tie here is a simple dragonfly nymph. There's uh, very few materials required. What I have here in the vise is just a, a curved nymph hook, uh, size eight. You can also tie these on streamer hooks. Uh, they work just fine. So what I wanna do first off is make sure I've got oh, about two bodkin widths behind the eye. I'm gonna build up a little bubble of thread on the front side. And I'm gonna quickly just jump back about a bodkin width and build another small little thread bubble there or thread dam. And I can clip out my tag. And uh, the way I like to do this, there's several ways to do it. Actually, I'll show you. Um, you can use something like pre-made uh, monofilament eyes. You can make your own monofilament eyes. You can uh, make your own monofilament eyes with uh, glass beads on the end. Uh, and that's really up to you. I'm just gonna use uh, a small pair of uh, dumbbell eyes. And the reason I like to use these, it just really in particular happens to do uh, with where I live. And um, I like, we've got a lot of rocks here and I like to get these down as quickly as possible. Uh, and then also right hook point up and this just seems to be the easiest way to do it so I'm just going to secure my dumbbell eyes on and uh, I know I'm not explaining this part very well but if you need to um, see how that's done a little more efficiently I have a video on that that explains that that you can look up so we're just going to secure those on and next we're just going to just jump our thread down to the back uh, and I go just barely into the bend so on this particular hook it's uh, just slightly past the hook point and you can glue uh, the thread right on top just to help secure those in place if you like uh, so first what we got to do is put on our tail and so for the tail all I have here is some olive marabou, and I've already stripped off the back. And I'm just going to take this and line it out so the marabou is about the length of the hook shank. And then what I'll do is I'll kind of twist it in my fingers like this to kind of get it a little more bushy as opposed to flat. It helps a little. I'm just going to place that right on top of my thread. And I'm just going to put uh, two or three pinch wraps over and really just kind of seat this where I want it make sure it's even on all sides you gotta be kind of careful on those curve shanks because they'll, they'll slide on you but uh, if you have enough weight on this fly you can actually use it on uh, some ultralight spin cast rods too it's kind of like a jig next I'm just going to kind of jump this forward tying this all in just up to right behind the eye before I get behind the dumbbell eyes, I'll clip that out. And I can just simply tie that down. Next, what I need is wire for the rib. And uh, what I have here is some amber colored uh, brassy size wire. I'm gonna tie this in right on top. And the reason I just tie it in on top is because I like my wire to be on the underside and the top's gonna be on the underside in this particular fly. And I'm gonna tie this back just before I get to my hook point. Next, I'm gonna take my second piece of marabou, same color, and I'm just gonna get it down to the tips so that the tips kind of line up with right behind the eye. And that'll get tied in in just a minute. And we're gonna get, take this back to where the tail starts. Now, if you're, if you're using a curved nymph, nymph hook and your tail starts to sag, you can lift all of your material up and swing a wrap or two underneath, if that, if that helps you. So, next I'm just gonna take my marabou and We've got a couple that didn't get tied in, so I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of those so they don't get in my way. And we're just going to take this and in my fingers, see, I'm going to lick my fingers a little bit. I'm just going to gently twist 
to get that started. And I'll bring my thread back forward, tying the rest of all this back in. If you're not comfortable with the way you've tied everything in, you can lay a glue base down. Just make sure it dries before you wrap the body because this is going to be the body. So I'm going to start to wrap this and you just want to make sure you rem remember which way you wrap this so that you can send your rib the opposite direction. And whoop, twisted it the wrong way. And you can just add a twist or so every wrap as you go around. Just kind of get a little nice fuzzy body. These flies are great for, uh, you know, smaller bass, bluegill, um, crappie, uh, trout. Uh, in the summer months, these these work a real nice number. And so now I've got this little tag left over. All I'm going to do is just pull this forward, bring my thread around the back side of that eye. I'll show you so you can see it. Bring, bring it around the back side of the eye, down in front, and just latch it down in front. Whoop, a bobbin slipped. Okay. And uh, then I'll take it to the back again just so that we keep the uh, front part of the hook nice and clean. And we can trim that off. So you should have something that looks about like this. Okay, and this time I'm gonna go the opposite direction. Which way did I go? I forgot. See, even, I even told you to pay attention and I forgot. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little bit of a raspy voice. Uh, and you can use different colored wire. It's uh, it's really up to you. I'm really just using amber here because it, it shows up nice and you can see the uh, the contrast. And we want to get four or five turns coming in up right behind the eye. And then we'll tie this off right behind the eye. I try to tie it in on the top side so that all of my spiral wraps make it complete all the way around. But uh, four to six turns. And you can tie these between, I've tied them as large as a six. Um, they don't seem to work as well on a six, but uh, typically eight to 10 is where, uh, where I get the most action on them. Now you can tie them a little bit smaller. You may have to lighten up. Now, if you do tie, a, uh, tie one of these with a monofilament eye, you wanna back this with uh, some kind of lead if you want it to sink quicker. I should have mentioned that sooner. So next I'm going to again go back to some marabou and what I'm looking to do is just get another length of marabou uh, that's the length of the shank from the hook eye to the bend and we're going to take that and we're just going to transfer it so that it's sticking out the front. I can see it, I lost it, there we go. And we're gonna place that position right behind the eye so this is sticking out front. And we're just gonna make a few wraps over. I'm shooting this video because somebody asked me um, to tie my favorite bluegill fly. <laughs> and uh, this is actually my favorite bluegill fly. I have more success on this than anything else by far. So once you have it sticking out front, you'll have this little uh, uh, motif coming out the front. We're just going to kind of grab that. You want to keep it kind of flat as it comes across the top. Let's see if I can do this on the side so you can see it. I'm just going to sneak my thread back onto the front side and place, whoop, it rolled on me, place a few wraps uh, right on the front side like so. Now we're going to come in and trim out the butt end of that marabou. Place another wrap or two. Now I'm going to come back to the back side of the eye. And at this point, I'm just going to collect everything, take my thumb, kind of fold everything over in between the dumbbell eyes. Collect it with my left hand and put about three or four turns in. So we have a little, little bit sticking out like this. Now at this point, before we finish the fly, 
what I like to do is separate all this and space it out because this is going to represent the legs. This fly is going to fish upside down as the way it is. And we'll go ahead and get rid of these little guys up front. And just splay all this out to where you're happy with it. And now I'm going to bring my thread underneath back to the front side place in some wraps just to kind of create a nose and you can kind of make this nose as big or as little as you want I try to put it like a little little nose on there although I'm not really sure this part makes all that much of a difference I think this is more for the appearance to us as opposed to the fish and I'm just going to do about a five, six turn whip finish or ten turn or whatever you feel. I'm just going to keep going just to whip finish the crap out of it. Pop the thread. And um, that's really it. Um, there's, uh, as you see, there's very little material involved um, and so on. So I'll just go ahead and glue the thread to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And uh, that's it, just a little damsel nymph. Uh, I find these things horribly effective in the summer months. As soon as you see dragonflies out and uh, things of that nature, these things uh, really come to life. Um, you can fish them uh, still water. Uh, if you're gonna fish them in moving water, I definitely suggest, uh, at least in my experience, uh, using like a monofilament eye and then backing it with lead so that it sinks a little more evenly. This is going to have a little bit more jigging action going up and down, up and down. So that's it. Anyway, hope you liked the video. Uh, give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, share. Always appreciate that. And as uh, always, happy tying, everybody. Take care, and we'll see you next time.